Hello, uh, thank you for the nice welcome. I'm going to introduce uh, my panelists in a moment. Uh, just to start, we're going to talk a little bit about NDC. I've got four slides, I think, just to do a brief introduction uh, about where NDC is today in the world, what's happening, uh, and to lead into an interesting discussion that we're about to have. Hopefully, most of you know the answer to this question. Um, I used this slide at, the last time I used this slide was at the Business Travel Show, where the audience was not as expert as you are. Uh, I also explained at the Business Travel Show that NDC is just a standard. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that at an ATP Co event. I think you all understand the importance of standards uh, in a way that perhaps some business travel buyers don't. And as Amit spoke about earlier, you know, there's been a, a long uh, evolution of e-commerce, technology that we've used in the airline industry for longer than almost any other industry. And this is another, another step on that path. Christian may talk us more about this in a moment when we ask about NDC and Lufthansa, but uh, I speak to airlines in my job as a consultant for distribution. All of the time I talk to airlines all over the world and we get answers Lots of airlines have got different reasons for doing NDC. A lot of people think that NDC is mainly about cost saving. Actually, we heard from Amit earlier that that wasn't Emirates' reason for NDC. They talked a lot more about better selling. So lots of airlines say, the main reason I want to do NDC is actually I want to retail my products more effectively. I want to be able to develop continuous pricing. I want to be able to merchandise better. I want to sell more ancillaries. And I want to do those things, not just in my direct channel, I want to do that through travel sellers, of which we have a travel seller with us as well today. It is certainly true that a lot of airlines also want competition in the aggregation marketplace. Uh, most airlines distribute most of their indirect products through a small number of players, the big GDSs. Uh, and many airlines welcome the fact that there's now more ways to get their product to travel sellers. Indeed, we, we have a technology provider and aggregator here to talk to us about that piece later on. Airlines also talk to us about better servicing. Um, NDC doesn't have a, a great reputation for servicing initially. Uh, it was a, it's the hardest thing to do. As many of you know, it's it's the easy part of airline selling is often selling the original ticket, the original product. Actually, everything that happens afterwards is often the complicated part. Uh, how you make sure you can change the product, refund the product, manage disruption. Many of you will work closely with revenue accounting colleagues, other people like that. And often this is the, this is the real hard part. And it has taken some time to, to get this right, I think. We're, we're going to dig into that subject as well a little bit later. Um, but I do hear airlines now talking about the fact that NDC is going to enable them to make servicing better than the old world. Um, airlines that are saying, when there's disruption, we're going to be able to manage disruption more effectively. We'll be able to offer options to travel sellers to choose which flight they want to rebook their customers onto. We won't need as many calls from travel sellers to airline call centers to be able to make changes. And I think that that's also another big benefit. Maybe yet to be really realized, um, but certainly something I see some airlines already doing and, and others planning for. Uh, and customer relationships is another one that's perhaps a little bit earlier on. Again, we heard a bit from Emirates earlier about the importance of customer relationships. And we are starting to see airlines which are giving different offers back if you put your frequent flyer number into the booking, uh, different offers back uh, for a small and medium business customer. Some airlines have a loyalty scheme for small corporate customers, uh, and they give special offers back for those customers as well. And that's something, again, that some airlines used to do on their websites, but often found it difficult to do through the indirect channel. And we're now starting to see airlines exploiting NDC and the technology they have in their uh, internal systems to make some of those offers available to travelers who are booking through third parties.
thinking just a couple of slides now on the kind of status of where NDC is. Um, again, thinking back to what we heard earlier, uh, if you're not on the path to NDC, you probably should be thinking about it uh, as an airline uh, or indeed as a, a travel seller or any other players in the chain. Most, for most people in our industry now, NDC is something that you're probably already working on or if not, you're thinking hard about. We might test that in a moment. Um, <laughs> But it, but it really is a global, uh, really is a global issue now. Some of this work on Direct Connect started in North America. Graham might be able to remember some of that back a while ago. Canada, American, and others. Um, Fifteen years ago, years something ago. like that. Um, uh, and then obviously the standard was codified just over ten years ago. Uh, but we've really seen significant usage now. A lot of usage in Europe. I was uh, head of distribution at British Airways. When we came out of full content, when we announced a surcharge, when we implemented uh, dual RBD pricing, working very closely with Jerry Fran there and the BA revenue management team. Um, that's one thing a couple of people have said to me in this conference, actually, the importance of distribution and revenue management teams working together. I think that was always important in the new world of offers and orders, NDC, these sorts of things, I think that becomes even more critical. The distribution teams and revenue management teams are really closely linked. Um, distribution teams also need to be working with sales teams and colleagues, but certainly on the whole kind of construction, technology, offers, all this kind of side, it's really important for distribution and revenue management teams to work together. Uh, at, and going on from some of those European carriers that have um, been heavily involved in NDC, we also see now carriers really across the world uh, doing a lot more on NDC, differentiating content, making new content available. And although there's still a few gaps in this map, some of you will be working for airlines that I've not talked about here. Um, some of you I know because I'm working with you as well. And I know that many, many other airlines have got plans to do interesting things with NDC with new content in the next 12 to 24 months. Lots of things that airlines are doing, surcharges, continuous pricing, sometimes their lowest fares are only in NDC, new ancillary products, corporate bundles, loyalty offers that we spoke about. It's a mixture of carrots and sticks, you often hear the phrase. Um, but I think in the longer term, we'll see that NDC will be the channel that provides the best content for any third party seller. And just finally, about the pace of change, um, I, we heard about a, a hockey stick. I think we really are, uh, in the last 12 months or so, have seen huge, huge changes. These headlines are all from April and May. When I first did this presentation, I wrote this in uh, the end of May, and I found an enormous number of uh, headlines of changes airlines had made from LATAM, Air France KLM, Americans changes, uh, Canada, uh, I, I like the headline of today in distribution cost shifting and Air Canada's NDC turn. Um, SAS trades the novel for the familiar. The, the familiar is now surcharging Edifact and driving NDC. I don't think when Lufthansa did it in 2015, it would have been described as a familiar strategy. <laughs> um, but it, it's now become something that is very common. So it really is a, a status where NDC is becoming quite a common critical strategy for many leading airlines, but also a lot of smaller airlines as well. With that, um, brief uh, starter, let's talk to the panel. Um, we, uh, I'll, I'll get them to introduce themselves in a minute and talk about NDC. We do have Christian from Lufthansa, so we've got an airline present. We've got Eric from TP Connects, uh, an aggregator and a technology provider to both airlines and travel sellers. Uh, we have Nikki from Flight Center, so a travel seller, and we have Graham from AT Pico. So we have a great panel covering a kind of whole range of players in the value chain. Once uh, we get past this brief audience participation activity, then I'll let you introduce yourselves and talk about how NDC is working in your company. And let's see if the technology works here. So we are going to ask you, we're not going to ask you to speak up, but we are going to ask you to try and vote if you can. Let's see if this works. So we're going to try and see what NDC means to you. Uh, is NDC a critical part of your strategy? You're heavily engaged in it. Is it something you're working on, but there's loads of things you're working on? 
Is it something you're kind of looking at? Is it just not important? Are you not in the right place and you're not even sure what NDC is? I <laughs> doubt that's true. Um, let's see. Okay, so we'll give it another minute, but it looks like it's mainly the top two. It looks like everybody's involved in NDC up to a point. Uh, and we have something like two thirds of the people saying it's really, really important. And another roughly a third saying, yes, they're working on it, but it's one of many. So it looks like it's a good subject and we're in the right place, which is good. Um, very good. Thank you for your participation. Right. Um, I will hand over to the panel. We'll go down the line here. Uh, if you'd just like to introduce yourselves and tell us what NDC means to your airline. Is it important to you? Presumably, yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the stage. But um, <laughs> yes, let's start with Christian. Thank you very much, Ian. Yeah, my name is Christian. Thank you. Very kind. <laughs> Did I, some, somebody I paid earlier. <laughs> well, thank you, Ian. My name is Christian. Uh, I'm working in a distribution team of Lufthansa Group. My team is mainly uh, responsible for driving NDC adoption amongst uh, business travel partners and corporates. I think we will have enough time to talk about the specifics. For Lufthansa Group, uh, NDC, and especially the whole journey towards modern airline retailing, is a key element of our commercial strategy, you know, as it enables us to increase customer value, increase profitability, and also being competitive in the market. Um, since we started in 2015, we have had um, support from our top management and we were able to continuously invest heavily in technology and processes. When we started, we were a small team of 10 colleagues. In the meantime, we have grown uh, the core distribution team of over 80 people. And um, we are really proud of and happy about what we have achieved. No? We have, a, thanks to our partners, comprehensive NDC API, with a huge scope of functionalities, more than 70 travel tech provider connected, more than 5,000 sales partners collaborating with us. Already in 2018, we created a new distribution partner framework with the NDC partner program. And we are constantly bringing exclusive NDC offers to the market, recently extended our continuous pricing to intercon routes, we have a different offer differentiation in the market and exclusive ancillaries, but we don't want to stop here. Uh, we, we're really aiming towards the industry vision of being at 100% offers and order in 2030, and that's what we are working towards and uh, driving different initiatives. Great. Thank you, Christian. Eric, what's your sure, view? Thank you. Good morning. Uh, first of all, Let's talk about the journey of NDC. I started NDC almost more than 10 years ago, and the result of the poll we saw today are just outstanding. More than 10 years ago, with Yata, a small group of suppliers went around a world tour, talking to you airlines. We went to Miami, we went to Geneva, we went to Singapore, and we went to try to convince you and to explain why NDC could bring value to the airline industry. And beyond the few innovative airlines that were already engaged, including Emirates, including Lufthansa Group, the American carriers, this was a long road of 10 years to get to the point where we are today and to the results we saw today where, yes, NDC, you are engaged. It's no longer a dream, it's a reality. TP Connect, who is based in Dubai, welcome to this lovely place, <laughs> was involved more than 10 years ago by providing a dual approach, both on the agencies and the sellers as an aggregator and as well as to airlines to make SWIFT easy your journey towards NDC. And from Singapore Airlines in the East uh, to Finnair in the West, we power a settlement of airlines to enable you airline to make your NDC products available to who you decide to distribute them. So again, welcome and we look forward for a very exciting NDC discussion today. Thank you, Eric. Nikki. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm Nikki Ping. Um, I look after air content and distribution for the Flight Centre Travel Group. Um, I've been, I guess, on my own little bit of NDC journey. I used to work for Ian um, at British <laughs> Airways. And before that, I was in revenue management um, at British Airways. Um, for us, I think NDC is part of the importance um, because 
it's important for us to be able to get content out to our customers, be that leisure customers or corporate customers, regardless of how airlines are distributing that content. So whether it's low-cost carrier content, traditional Edifact or NDC, almost the customer <laughs> doesn't really mind. They just want the content. And I think that it's becoming more and more important for corporates because we see some airlines... Um, are sort of starting to, to talk directly to the corporate customers as part of their negotiation of their route deal and saying, actually, I will give you a better discount or I will give you specific bundles, but only through NDC. So we're starting to get more and more corporate customers coming to us and saying, the airlines has said this to me. I need you to make sure that you can put that content in front of me. Very interesting. Graham. Good morning. Uh, Graham Worm. Uh, strategy and partnerships at uh, HVCO. I've been involved in uh, NDC, I think, since day one. Uh, not my fault, however. Uh, so with the uh, assistance of, uh, when, way back when, when it was called Open Access, with the assistance of my buddy Tom, we eventually made that way to have that standard put into IATA. Um, and 15 years later, we are here. Um, I think for ATPCO, NDC is uh, a critical component. We uh, we support the industry's goals and objectives. It's one of our uh, it's one of our core design teams, um, and it's something we work on every day through data standards, uh, our processes. Uh, so it's super critical to us, and we're here to support uh, the industry in, in the involved as it evolves. Very good. We'll perhaps get into a bit more how ATP is helping as we go through. So. We've made lots of progress on NDC, it sounds like, uh, and a number of players here were very committed. Let's still look ahead. We've still got things that we want to improve, things that we want to develop. There's, st there's still some challenges. So maybe we can touch on what you think the, the, the big issues are for the next few years, uh, and then maybe we can follow that up with a discussion about what we should do about them. Christian, do you want to... Yeah. Off. Um, I'm often asked by colleagues, hey, Christian, give me the single item we need to fix to get significant production uh, in all segments. And um, unfortunately, I think there is not that golden recipe. For me, it's like a, a big puzzle piece no? where you have to put certain pieces together in order to reach the desired state. And what we do at Lufthansa Group is we, we focus on four key areas. Uh, one is still plumbing and they see connectivity and access. Um, especially with the, for the big multinational and global corporates no, who have many players in the chain where you need to have an end-to-end -end experience, so a lot of plumbing still to do in that field. Then it's about um, B2B servicing enhancement automation. I think we have a good degree of servicing, but I, I believe we can leverage more process efficiencies, so, so making the, the functionalities better and automate more on the tools. NEC value proposition, my boss always says the fun starts now, so uh, it's really about testing, exploring, merchandising test case. We don't know the full answer, what, is, what are the 15 uh, bundles we need, so we need to explore, we need to get customer feedback and really bring it to the shelf to get concrete feedback. And then it sounds obvious, but it's still a big effort, it's about change management mm. internally and externally. Uh, talk with our partners, why are we doing it, talk with our sales force, giving them confidence to talk also tech with corporate customers and partners. So I think this is also uh, a crucial field. Yes, yeah. I heard Tamur recently say that the first, one of the first people you hired to go from that 10 to 80 was a, a change manager. Absolutely. I can, yeah, I can recognize that. Uh, Eric, what's your view on key, key challenges, key things we should be focused on going forward? Sure. Um, generally speaking, NDC has been very efficient and with very low friction when it comes to the sales of our creation by itself. This is something that got solved very, very quickly, very rapidly in the journey. But we, as an industry, we faced major challenges around the services. As of today, this has changed very significantly since the recent uh, standards, including 21.3, the servicing is an area where we feel both as airline partners as well as suppliers to the airline industries and to the agencies and to the sellers, much more comfortable that the servicing has reached a level of maturity, which enables this level of automation. I think the days where we ask the agent to go and call the airline to change the ticket are hopefully fading away 
and we are certainly, and we need to make sure we do have the necessary level of automation so that agencies, sellers, are able to automatically change tickets and do all this servicing without needing to call the airline, which is an additional cost for the airline. So a significant amount of investment, both in the standards and the execution and the implementation have been done. And this topic, I believe, is starting to get part of the past of the history of the NDC transition. We still have an issue in related to interlining, and this is an area which is probably the next big problem yet to be solved. Today, the interlining is still left over from a miss when NDC has been designed. We had to acknowledge it, but at least we know what we have to focus on, and this is what is left to solve a little bit this big picture of the new world. Nikki, anything you would add to? Uh, yeah, I think it's. Um, I think the next thing we really need to focus on is probably a little bit of refinement. I think that um, from an airline perspective, what I sort of have seen is that the revenue management teams and distribution have felt, I guess, freedom. Suddenly, they're not constrained by 26 booking classes. They've got dual RBDs or dynamic pricing, and they're like, oof, I can create like millions of offers, which is great. But it, I think the Emirates presentation at the start around understanding the context of why your customer is traveling is really important. And there's no way that if you generate 500 offers and put them in front of a customer, that actually any customer can make a sensible choice. So it's about making sure that how as a customer I shop is, is kind of what you re return to me. So for example, as a corporate customer, I may not want the cheapest basic economy because I think I might have to change, but I don't want to have to pay what would traditionally have been like a full J, fully flex fare. I tend to go for something in the middle. Let me kind of tell you that that's what I want and, and only give that back to me because otherwise the revenue management teams are generating hundreds of offers that actually are never going to go anywhere. So I think I, I don't want to kind of stifle the opportunity and the creativity, but let, let's <laughs> refine it a little bit. I think that's what I'm kind of thinking that we need to have conversations about a little bit. Graham, anything to add to those yeah, subjects? Think, uh, from my perspective, it's um, the biggest challenge is one of posture, really. It's, um, there's lots of technology problems, and those technology problems we're probably really good at solving. We've solved a million technology problems over time. Most of what's happening on NDC is still around leverage and push, right? Whether there's surcharges or uh, pulling away content, that's, that's the things that make the biggest changes in terms of booking volume instead of looking at what are the values and how can we all benefit from what is essentially a technology change. Uh, the, the second thing I would add is like, this isn't a knife edge cutover. This is a transformation. Leveraging everything you've got at your disposal already is probably the easiest way to get through where we are. So. Yeah, we're gonna be, we talk a lot about being in two worlds for a long time. And I think there were some sessions later on today, the ATP could have got about living in two worlds. So that, that's a subject that we'll need to investigate. Um, let, let's just see whether we want to dig into any of those subjects anymore. If anybody's got um, specific thoughts on, so we the, let's just recap. So servicing's an issue. We heard different views of where we are. I recently saw a, an interview with uh, a, somebody, Navan, saying that they thought we were about 80% of the way there. It'll be interesting to see what <laughs> I'll ask you in a minute if you think 80% is uh, the right sort of number. Um, so the servicing, we'll come, maybe we come back to shopping volumes, merchandising, and interlining. Those were kind of four subjects. So maybe we'll just take each of those in turn and don't necessarily need everybody to answer, but <coughs> anyone got any views particularly on servicing first? As a, uh, do you want to start again, Christian? See yeah. you nodding. For me, it's hard to put a percentage to it. I think we, we made great progress on servicing and let's say major refund and exchange scenarios are covered, but still in good exchange with our value chain partners, we have pretty good overview, like a list of use cases where we need to work on our, mm -hmm. our NDC API. Um, I'll give you an example, exchange of an exchange of an exchange. Um, Partially flown tickets, especially in involuntary servicing, we see uh, fields of, of enhancements and overall like, increasing process efficiency. You know? So we have good exchange capabilities, but we think we can do it even better. So 
we uh, invest quite significantly in the enhancements of the API uh, and try to do our homework. But in the end, it comes down to this uh, collaboration with all industry partners because we need to make sure that it finally reaches the corporate customer and the partner. So it doesn't help us if one party is working on it, we need to do it together, refine requirements, jointly look at the priorities, and then in the end, being able to offer it to the, to the customers. So that collaboration is really important. Yeah, and I think that that's a really important point about it's really hard to put a percentage on it because if you ask IATA, they'll tell you it's 100%, and probably actually the standard is capable of doing everything. But then it's about, has the airline actually implemented it? And I think as you, what you'll find as you go closer and closer to the actual customer who gets on the plane, the percentage will, will drop because even though the airline may have implemented it, it then needs the technology that the customer is using to implement it. And I think that we see airline websites or, or online booking tools, a lot of them have enabled a customer to book an NDC um, product, but actually can they cancel it and change it online? Actually, in the vast majority of cases, the online tool cannot handle it yet. So it still needs to go to a person. So we need to try and get that overall percentage up, I think. Eric, anything else to say on servicing? Yeah, the, the journey is usually a step-by-step -step and a lot of the airlines started slow. And what we see is simply as their volume increase, as they provide volume, value to the customer by providing via NDC specific products, it's the hockey stick effect that was mentioned earlier. And indeed, as the volume is very low, why investing in doing a servicing automated? It's okay to be cold. Once you start to sell thousands of tickets via NDC because you do provide to your customers value added proposition, this is when this problem mm -hmm. starts to ring. So it's to be this spiral of evolution that airlines have to take into consideration. So it is why for me the 80% the, the the is probably not necessarily very important mm. because we know that airlines with very low volume do not necessarily have the incentive to automate the servicing very early in the process. However, we do hope that the airlines who have a much higher volume are closer to the three digits because there is an inherent cost of mm. not doing the servicing properly. And this is why I was mentioning earlier that it is probably part of the past for the airlines who are willing to invest and to solve this issue. I believe the volume is much more about the value of the product created by the airline for the end consumer. And this is where NDC is kicking in terms of merchandising, in terms of rich content. You have to think about selling a seat, a product, which is not only a place in the plane, but it is to, to sell the experience of traveling. And whether it is the color of the floor of the plane or the experience of getting a car to bring you to the airport, this is the journey and the product which is being offered to the consumer. This is changing everything. It's not only about a price point, a fare. It is a product we buy because of the experience. This is why NDC has been designed, is to enable inspirational shopping on a mobile phone. You mentioned mm. earlier, you are the sand, you're enjoying, you're watching your kids swimming, you still have your phone, you can look at where do we go for the next vacation. <laughs> and yes, volumes will be skyrocketing. Mm. The look to book ratios, boundaries are going to break. It's no longer the thousands to one. It's going to be 10, 20 thousands to one. And this is why NDC has been designed and volume does not matter. What does matter is indeed as the airline goes through this journey, and start to understand the value proposition you can do by creating attractive products yeah. for the buyer to jump in. This is when NDC gets all its value by providing not only a price, but really an attractive way to buy a product. Graham, any views on servicing or, or with the next issue we're gonna to come to with shopping volumes, either of those two? Yeah, I mean, from servicing perspective, I think 80% is a tough one for me. Yeah. It all depends on who you ask. Um, I think if you ask Christian versus Nikki, they'd be very far apart. Um, I think the only way to get through this is, is collaboration. And that's not collaboration like one-on-one, -on -one, it's collaboration as an industry. That's the approach that ATP Pico is taking with our design teams, trying to get people to talk. If you listen to uh, a couple months ago, uh, American Express wrote a, uh, 
what they call it an MVP yeah. or a memorandum or whatever they call it. I would think if you read that, you would not be anywhere close to 80% if you see the litany of things that they say need to be repaired. But I think as an industry, if we, we identify from all the perspectives uh, what it is that we want to fix, there is no technology hurdle we can't, uh, we can't fix. Shopping volumes is another one we've talked about. Nikki, you touched on <coughs> shopping volumes as, a, as an issue. Anything else that you think could help us address that challenge? Anything Let me else? shop for what I want. Don't give me all this cheap nonsense if I don't want to buy it in the first place. So <laughs> Surely context, everybody wants context, us to pay right. more. So actually, if I want something that's like semi-flex, just, just let me shop for that in the first place. And I think ATPCO's product catalogue is going to really help me to actually refine at the shopping stage what I want, which I think is a win-win because I get what I want. And I would imagine from the airline perspective, you get fewer requests, which, which is a good thing as well. Yeah. That's a good point. I think from, you know, we have to get a little more sophisticated. Now it seems to be a uh, question, million answers. Um, and, and that then is for the seller to sort out and try to satisfy the customer. I think we need to get a little more sophisticated in our, our question response. Um, but I think that's time. We'll get there. I think with, with things that HPCO is doing with our, our, uh, our filtered attributes, our product catalog, those are kind of things that are there to support getting that fine tuning that you need. Yeah. So you would encourage airlines to be looking at product catalog, airline profile, Absolutely. thinking about get their in, shopping volumes. Get involved in our design teams, get your voice heard, get it, help us to, to uh, help you. Because really. not only have you got hundreds of offers from one airline, but you've, you're asking lots of airlines at the exactly. same time lots for of airlines response. At the same time. So you're potentially yeah, so getting too many. <laughs> anything to add on this point about shopping volumes, Christian? Or I think I can can only echo. Yeah. So we we see significant volume increases not only on NDC but also on our dot coms. So we have implemented, I think, in two nineteen to twenty first um, solutions to better handle volume in regards to meta search engines and, and OTAs. I um, think we will continue to collaborate with all partners on this front and we're also trying to, to optimize what we deliver to the partner no? because in the past we delivered everything um, even though it might not be the relevant product for a, spe a special target group. So we're really in close exchange with our partners to find out what offers should we deliver, do A-B testings to see if we uh, see improvements in, in shopping reduction. Uh, but it's a constant journey, and I think it will, will continuously increase, and we need to find an answer as an industry. The other two subjects we talked about, conscious of time, so I'll bundle the question together. Anything else that we need to do to really effectively merchandise or retail, or, or if you feel like we've covered that with the previous answer? Uh, and interlining, any interlining is a very simple subject to address in 30 seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> any quick, quick thoughts on interlining before we come on to the last Two or three other questions? I guess it is very complex and slining, um, but probably in, in reality, it's quite a small proportion of what we sell. From a corporate perspective, what we do get, though, is a lot of questions, not necessarily specifically about interlining, but I guess that as more and more kind of airline joint ventures have come, um, come up, uh, a lot of airlines now don't negotiate with their corporate or their travel sellers as an airline, they negotiate as a joint business. Mm -hmm. And um, when they introduce NDC, often it's met the concept of metal neutrality, which has been drummed into us for a long time, has gone out of the window. And so corporate customers are saying, well, hold on, do I now have to go back to having deals with separate airlines? And what does that mean? Do I have to shop for everybody in the alliance and stuff like that? And so I think I'm not going to get involved in solving interline because it's way too complicated. But thinking about how you explain it to us so that we can explain it to the customers, mm -hmm. I think, is an important part of that. Any other thoughts on interlining, anyone? I mean, I think we probably are going to get involved in it. <laughs> yeah, I think you probably are. Solving it. <laughs> um, I think uh, you know, you're leveraging, leveraging how we do it today uh, in a new distribution channel. It, it's super complex, as you say. Um, but I think there's a solution out there. I think if we uh, if, if we collaborate and, and think through it, we'll we'll get to a solution. On interlining, probably one mistake the industry made initially when the initial standard were designed is we didn't invite the sellers and the agencies around the table. And I think we have to learn from this. Mm. And probably if we really want as an industry to solve the interlining problem, um, we really need to get into a room, bring the sellers, 
bring the agencies around the table <laughs> with airlines, with technological partners, and to simply leave this room with what a solution that can be adopted. Interlining is extraordinarily complicated, but this is the only way, and the only way to convince the industry that the path that will be chosen will be right is by making sure sellers will be around the table and we sign off on this. We should book that room for quite a long time when we have that meeting, but um, <laughs> collaboration, I guess, being the, is the key thing we've talked yeah. about. Um, only a couple of minutes left. Any quick views on NDC adoption in different regions or different channels? Do you see some areas, either parts of the world or channels where NDC is taking on a different path or growing faster? And, and what do you think will happen in future? Yeah, at Lufthansa Group, we see adoption almost in every region. Of course, in our home markets, due to our market relevancy, we have the highest adoption. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, I think it's good to see the momentum, right? I think according to the airline retail maturity index, about 70 airlines are in the meantime engaging with NDC. And usually you start in your, your home markets on your home region. Um, you bring in new models, uh, new, new offer, and then all, all of a sudden uh, you can, can, can stake, scale it. Right from the beginning, we didn't limit it to any segment. No? So we, we did projects with uh, corporate um, agencies, with OTAs, with two operators. But naturally, um, most of the, the volume um, and the scaling happened in the leisure space mm -hmm. in the OTA sector. However, um, we, we also have uh, huge corporate setups live. Um, and here it depends really on the business model, the target group, and the tech stack of the different partners. I think the biggest challenge is still the multinational and global TMCs where you have OVE, TMC, and different NDC aggregators depending on the booking tool. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to address with, we call it blueprints. So bringing all partners of this setup on the table and trying to enable this setup, ideally with one global customer who is providing insights on, on requirements and gives us a chance to start small and then iterate on it. And then the challenge is really to, to scale that setup to other corporate customers having the same uh, infrastructure. I'm gonna ask the last question. You can answer the previous question and the last question in 15 <laughs> seconds each. Uh, <laughs> if you had one piece of advice for an airline that's starting on the path to NDC, what would you say? We'll go along the line. Okay, uh, do a deep dive now. Um, learn about the opportunities, challenge, and prerequisites. And I think um, there's a lot of resources material out there from IATA, ATPCO, and also reach out to the experts, no? to the travel tech providers, NDC API providers, and also happy to give answers from the airline perspective. Dive in, collaborate. Absolutely. Eric? Sure, um, we have passed the, the stage of the testing and evaluation. We know it works. It's proven. You saw the numbers, you heard Emirates, mm -hmm. here Lufthansa. There are some great examples out there of successful airlines who are well engaged into this transformation. Today, you have ways to jump on the train and to simply join uh, this new world, which ultimately is here to bring you value as airlines. And it is relatively easy for you to simply contact a certain amount of suppliers who can help you to make your swift transition mm -hmm. to NDC. It's easier now than people that started 10 years ago or it's something much, like that. It, again, we yeah. evolved, we grown, yeah. we learned, okay. we iterated. This is becoming a mature type of solution. And we believe uh, this is why to the volume increase and as the content differentiation to increases, the various NDC mm -hmm. channel happen, that will bring additional value for you. Right, we're standing between everybody and their second coffee of the day. So very, very quickly, last word from Nikki and Graham. Um, I think if I was giving advice to an airline, I would say understand who your top travel sellers are and actually go out and talk to them and have a look at their customer front ends and make sure that if you're going to be creative and come up with loads of products, that either they're going to work in that front end, otherwise nobody's going to be able to buy it, or if they don't, help them close the gap. And so it's really trying to get out there and see what the customers really see. Yeah. And Graham, to finish. I'd have three pieces of advice. Is make friends. So <laughs> join, join design teams, get informed. Uh, uh, two, leverage what you have. Right? This, you don't have to reinvent everything. This is a transformation. Go slowly. Leverage what you've got and build on it. And three, 
stay stay standard as you can while while you yeah. while you try to be unique. Stay standard. Uh, stay think standard. about Nikki because <laughs> she's good. got a service it at the end of the day. Well, let's go and make some more friends in the break then. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>